Hi, I'm William Stahl, and this is part three of how I built my own personal track spikes. So if you've ever raced track and you've ever used racing spikes, you know how they work. You screw the spikes in and out with a tool like this, and thus the shoe has removable spikes. And that's good if you want longer spikes, shorter spikes, if your spikes dull out. And of course, I want to do that when I'm building my own spikes. So, it should be pretty easy, right? I just have to find inserts like this and put them in my shoes. Now, it turns out, that's not the case. It's not that easy. So, as it turns out, the threads on this one little spike, they don't conventionally exist. You can't find this exact thread size and pitch in any regular nuts and bolts. They just don't exist. I searched for hours online and I found nothing. And I got a little discouraged, wondering if this project would even be possible with removable spikes. But it turned out I actually found something that I had ignored because I didn't know what it was. It's this tool called a tag. Now looking up close, you see it's kind of like a screw or a bolt, but there's cuts down the side. Now what this is for, this is built to cut threads. So as it goes, you put it in a hole, you twist it until your threads are cut. And it turns out, for whatever reason, while you can't find threads like this, you can at least make them. This tap is size 1232, which is thread size of a spike. I ordered this online, and now it's here. So, let's go try it out. You didn't think I wasn't wearing safety glasses, did you? Safety first, guys. So here is the finished product. It doesn't look too different from a regular nut, but you probably can't find these anywhere else. 
they have a very special thread now because of how I've machined them, because of how I've used the, the tap. So now, here's one of the removable spikes for a shoe, and you can see it actually screws on quite nicely. Again, you won't be able to find these threads anywhere else. You have to make them with a 1232 tap. Alright, as you can see, I've made six of these nuts. They were previously a size 632 nut for reference. All right, I'm about to hot melt this in. You see, I've printed this piece of plastic that should be roughly what it's gonna be inserted to for the final shoe, whether it's in PLA or nylon. This is PLA, by the way. As you can see, this nut should fit tightly in there, but I'm going to melt it in to see if that makes it nice and secure. And after this is melted in, you screw the spike in it should point out like that. All right, after testing, it seems like it just pops right out. See, I can pop it in, I can pull it right out. So this isn't quite effective. I have to try something else. All right, so maybe rubbing the plastic up over the top of the nut might help a little bit. We'll see. All right, so here's the most recently printed spike plate I've done. Here's the insert melted into it, what would be a section of the plate. I will have to print another plate though with hexagonal holes so I can melt these hexagonal nuts into them. And here's another point of progress, the upper. Uh, it has the last inside of it, and I have reprinted this back section of the last. The heel is now more curved. I don't have the other one to compare it with, but it's narrower in the heel. And this time with the upper, I have stitched it together. I printed these small joining sections so I could sew it together. And so it's on this side of the shoe, this side, and at the heel. Now, it's known that stitching can be kind of irritating, so having it down the side of the shoe like this might not be the best option, but I will test that out to see how it affects me personally. And on the bottom of the shoe, the upper is actually stitched to this thin piece of green fabric. So the next step for this upper would be to add a tongue and laces, maybe some padding around the heel collar, but after that, it should get glued on to a midsole. For the midsole, I don't know yet. I really don't. I might have to buy an old pair of sandals and cut those up, but for the material, I do want something that's light and kind of bouncy. I do, of course, need a little bit of protection if I'm going for eight, 12 laps around a track. 
now that I've tapped out these threads, there's nothing else I can do today. So now, for my next steps, I have to finalize the design of the plate. Although it won't really be a final design, but it should be the design where I melt in all the nuts that I've recently tapped out. And I'll also have to work on a tongue for this. And I have to find a way to create a midsole. Now finding the foam for this isn't easy. Kind of like how it wasn't easy to make the threads that I needed. But I did it. I'm going to persist because I think this is a really interesting project. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. So I'm getting really excited for this project. I hope to make a lot of good progress in the coming weeks. And if you want to see that, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. I really think this is a special project and I hope to share it with a lot of people. Alright, until then, I've been Will Stahl. And stop wearing elf shoes.